Over the years I have salvaged quite a load of transformers out of various pieces of equipment. Unfortunately, most of the times I just ripped out the transformer and stored it away. So at this point I have quite a collection of transformers with totally unknown specifications. Now that I have some time I decided to finally tackle that problem and I thought in this video I would show you how it's done. So in this box I have all the transformers that I already investigated. I'm writing down the specifications directly on the transformer so that I cannot forget them anymore. Let me start by explaining what I have right here. This is a test jig that I built this morning. It took me about 30 minutes and it makes testing the transformers so much easier. We have a plastic container, transparent plastic, just for safety. And then we have mains input right here that goes into a pair of alligator clips. And hooked up in parallel to those is a little power indicator light so that you know exactly when the power is on and when it's off. Like uh, I can put the cover back on, turn it on, and for some reason nothing happens and that is because I unplugged it. Let's try this again. Here we go. Now we got the little power indicator light right there. Uh, there is also this uh, alligator clip off to the side. There was some space left there. So that's <laughs> that's why that is right there. Okay, uh, now I have this transformer. This is totally unknown. Uh, I took this out of, I think, a receiver. And it's, well, it's a number of years ago, so I can't really remember. What I do remember is back then I tried measuring the voltages and nothing really made any sense. So I actually wrote on here defective question mark. So we'll have to see what this is all about. Uh, this is pretty, pretty much unknown. I'm pretty sure this right here is the primary. We do have two inputs right there and then all the rest is capped off. So those might be inputs for different mains voltages. And then on the other hand side, on the other side, we have a whole bunch of outputs. I am assuming these are outputs. I'm assuming this is the secondary. The colors are all pretty random. These do look like they had something to do with each other. Green and white might be a center tapped output. But then right here, I don't know what this is all about. So this is where we are going to start. We have to figure out what is what. We'll have to figure out which windings connect to which wires. Now you cannot just simply go and take a voltmeter to this. That's what I did back when I first tested this. And it's going to be very inconclusive because you can pretty much measure a voltage between anything. That's just how the transformer works. Uh, you can take two completely random wires and you're always going to have a volt in between even if there is no winding. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, uh, actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a piece of paper to take some notes. Okay, that's better. So the next thing is I'm going to switch my multimeter into the ohms range and then we can go ahead and first I want to see if the primary really is the primary. So I'm going to measure this. And let's see. We got about 8 ohms. That seems a little low. But then again, this is a big transformer. So I'm just going to assume that this is the mains. All the rest I don't care. It's capped off and I'm going to leave it like that. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, the, this, uh, the secondary. So this, as I already said, this uh, might be kind of obvious. So I'm going to start measuring white and green. And indeed we have 
well, about 0.9 ohms. Measure the other green. We got about the same. And now I'm going to measure from green to green. It's about 1 point, 1 point something. So that is a center tapped winding. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to make sure that this has no uh, relation to any of the other windings on the other side. So let me, uh, I'm going to keep my probe on the center tap of that winding and I'm going to test all the other windings. And well, we got, uh, this. Is, uh, these are mega ohms, so that doesn't matter. Mag ohms. Mac ohms, Mac ohms, and Mac ohms. So that's our first winding, center tapped winding right there. So that's good. Uh, what you're looking for is a very low resistance, just uh, like a few ohms or below an ohm, something like that. So next I'm going to try orange and orange. It would make sense for those to be one winding, and indeed they are. That's five ohms. Then we got red and red. That would make sense. And indeed, 1.3 ohms. And we do have a yellow lead and a black lead left over, and now that's in the mega ohms range, so those obviously don't form a winding. So I guess we have, uh, well maybe these are some more center tapped wirings, wires, wi windings, that's what it is. And yes, yellow and red get about one ohm. Let's try the other red. And again we have an ohm. Let's see black and orange, that's three ohms, and the other black and orange, again, three ohms. And just to double check, black and yellow is in the mega ohms range, so we got two more independent center tapped windings. So let me just take some notes right here. Everything has been written down and now this transformer really isn't that much of a mystery anymore. We have a primary winding. I'm just going to assume this mess is one primary winding. That's all that's interesting about that. And then we have three independent secondary windings and they're all center tapped. So I'm now going to switch the multimeter to volts AC and I'm going to attach the transformer to the testing jig. One and two. And put the safety cap back on. And that's it. No messing around with alligator clip leads. Nothing is unsafe. Love it. <laughs> Those were 30 minutes very well spent. So now let's apply power. Indicator light comes on and tells me that I should not take this uh, plastic uh, shield off. And now I'm just going to uh, measure. I'm going to start with uh, white and green. And that is... Well, that's interesting. We have about one and a half volts. Okay, let's test the other one. Again, one and a half volts. That is strange. Let's try green. That's 2.8. Okay, I'm just going to write this down. We got uh, 1.4, 2.8, now let's try black and orange. And we have 21 volts. That, uh, that's nice, 21. Let's try the other orange, black and orange. 
21 and from orange to orange we have 43 volts so that's 21 and 43 now uh, this is uh, by the way important to note if you're measuring one center tapped winding you want to start with the uh, orange and black from one sort of uh, one end of the winding to the center you don't want to go end to end you want to go end to center 21 volts that's safe I can then go and test end to end if it's considerably more than 40 volts like if I measured end to center 40 volts then I would have about or then I should expect to have 80 volts end to end and that would be dangerous you don't want to touch voltages that are considerably higher than 40 or 50 volts uh, because uh, if I if I would get my fingers wet and I would put my fingers across the 43 volts I would certainly feel the uh, the power going through my body it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me but still this is this is just uh, you know safety okay so that being said I now want to go yellow and red we have 27 volts the other yellow to red is also 27 volts so we can expect about 60 volts on both of the reds so I do want to try not to touch them all at the same time and while we have I'm not making very good contact here let me uh, let me try to uh, do this a bit better okay that one is insulated and we got well, about 56 volts okay that should still be safe to touch but oh well now that I've given that kind of advice I should probably follow it right so that is our transformer all figured out so it's uh, we have 230 volts in we have 2.8 volts center tapped out so that's two times 1.4 which is quite interesting I think the receiver that I pulled this out of had a vacuum fluorescent display so this winding may have been for the heating of the vacuum fluorescent display that would make sense I then have 21 volts times 2 or 43 volts in total and I have 27 volts times 2 or 56 in total so that is quite a useful transformer and of course now I know that this is not broken and now when I go to disconnect the transformer to put it away the red light tells me turn off the power so that's what I'm gonna do red light is off I can take off the safety cover take out the primary windings and now this can go into storage for use in a future project and that's it for this video so thank you for watching